Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Today, I'm going to show you that you are all great speakers. But with a little bit of fine tuning, you can be amazing. Before I start, I would like to you put an illustration on the board. Can you tell me what this is? Arrow. Arrow? All right. What would we call this thing? The target. The target, right. And if I was to hit here, what do we call this? Bullseye. And of course, if you want to hit the bullseye, the arrow has to travel in a straight line. It can't go up and down and it will reach its target. I'll come back to this illustration to explain why I put it up and why it is important when you are organizing and delivering any speech. All of you all have grandmas here. How many of you have a cool grandma? <laughs> why do you think she's cool? Stories. She tells stories, lovely stories. Much better than your mama's, right? Yes. What about you? My, uh, my grandma saves me from my mom. Like, she saves you she from you. She saves me and she makes the best food. All right, enough about our grandmas. I also had an amazing grandma. Uh, she died when I was very young. But what was great about her was the night time, this is 50 years ago, no electricity, no television, and definitely no TikTok. <laughs> So, and it was very dark outside, all jungle everywhere. And in the night, she would light a candle and we would all sit around her and she would tell us scary stories. And it was so amazing the way she could tell stories. Our mothers can never tell stories like that. Why is that? Because they have gained the wisdom of being mother and then grandmother and they know how to tell the story that will catch you. So if you think of this as a story, okay, a target to hit you at the end, right? That's your conclusion. At the end of the story, you're either scared or you're excited. Any story must have a target. What are you talking about? What's the end goal? We call this the conclusion. If you have a great conclusion, what will happen? You'll hit the bull's eye. So always keep your eye on the bull's eye when you are creating your story. Also, it is very important how you start the story. If you start the story with a question or something funny, everyone will start looking at you and listening to you. It is important to have a great opening too. So start with the target, your end goal, but also now start thinking about the opening. How will you start? Will you tell a joke? You'll get people laughing and then listening to you. And then decide from the opening to that target how you will reach it. That is what we are talking about today. How do you organize the speech so that your opening and the conclusion are in sequence? You always keep a straight arrow. If your target is, for example, to make people laugh, then maybe you will have a lot of jokes in your st story, right? But if your speech is about, let's say, convincing everyone not to use plastic, then what will you do in your speech? You'll talk about, yes, how it affects the marine life, right? So you will start bringing all the facts and figures telling, one, two, three, four, five. That's why you have to stop using plastic. So you will create the story around the top. This is what we call the body. So start with your conclusion, what you want your audience to go home with. Come up with a great opening so they'll start listening to you. And then build your body of the speech. And of course, in the body, there should be proper transitions. Right? So you have three points. You start with one point, transition to the next point. Don't go back to the first point. Right? Then the third point. And then finally, you will reach your 
conclusion. And finally, a very important thing for any speech is to give a nice title. Today, I saw a lot of you all giving icebreakers. Everyone gave an icebreaker today, right? But I would have liked you all to think of some title for your speech rather than I'm giving icebreaker or I'm talking about myself. Alize talked about her hobbies. You like baking and singing and TikTok videos, right? If I was to ask you to give a title to your speech about your icebreaker, what would you give? All you need to know about me, okay? Anybody else? My culture, absolutely, yeah. So everyone will say, oh, I'm going to learn about somebody's culture. They'll be excited rather than saying, I'm going to talk about myself. Pick up some title that will catch the attention. So when you are going for your next speech, think of the title also. Keep it sort of mysterious so people are interested to know what is this person going to talk about. Start with the conclusion. Think of a good opening. Build your body. And then come up with a title. Now, any speech that you are going to create, two minutes or three minutes, it can fall into four categories. I like to call it I pie. Do you like pie? Apple pie? Yes. You like? <laughs> okay. So your speech can be about informing. So today's speech is about your icebreaker or the informational type of speech. You were talking about yourself. You were informing us who you are, where do you come from, what do you like. The other type of speech could be what we call persuasion or persuade. Give me an example of a persuading type of speech. Absolutely, that's a persuasion type of speech. Petition? Petition. Any petition is a persuasive type because you want people to do something. Pursuing your dreams. Pursuing a dream would not be persuading somebody else. You must talk about a subject where you want somebody else to change their mind. Anything to say, don't do that, don't do this, or do this, or do that, that's a persuasive type of speech. The other type of speech is what we call inspire. Here, you are not trying to persuade anybody. What are you trying to do? How do you inspire? Yeah, absolutely, yes. I sometimes give inspiring speeches about fitness. You know, I go to the club and I, I talk about, I don't say you should run or you should do exercise. What I do? I say, I do like this and that's why I'm looking so good. So that inspires people to maybe become fit. Mahatma Gandhi is a classic example of inspiration. When he wanted to throw the British out, he did not uh, tell everyone come here, we'll throw the British out. He said, I will go and do a salt march. I'm fed up. People got inspired to come there. He didn't ask, they came. Nelson Mandela, inspiration. Maybe your teachers are an inspiration for you. So there is a fine line between persuasion and inspiration. Inspiration is you simply do what you want to do and hope others will follow you. You don't persuade them, you don't change their mind. So there is a distinction between persuasion and inspiration. And finally, it's very, very important. Encouragement. Entertainment. You must entertain. Right? So today, for example, I think it was Saad, right? Was talking about Tom and Jerry. And he was having a lot of humor. Humor makes you get your audience to like you because you are talking about your sister, how they are troubling you, and you are making it in a funny way. Purpose is that it need not be just this. One, your speech can be a mixture. So you could inform with some entertainment. You could persuade with some entertainment. Or you could inform and persuade and inspire and entertain all in one package. But your objective should be at least one of them, the key objective, the bullseye. Right? You say, I'm going to inform. That's your main objective. But I will have some fun. Or if you want to entertain, then that's your main objective, to get as many laughs as possible. You'll put some information. 
you will try to do some persuasion, but ultimately your goal is what? To make people laugh. Stand-up comedy is a classic example. Their only job is to give you a good time. When you are choosing your speech, choose one of the objectives, try to add the other elements as required. Because some speeches might not be suitable for ent entertainment. You don't want to make people laugh when your subject is very serious, maybe. So it all depends. Choose. And then start building your... One final thing I would like to add, before, because today, by the way, we will create our own speech. I want you all to get involved. When you're creating any speech, whether the speech is great or amazing or just average, depends upon how many of you all know Aristotle? He came up with what we call the proofs or the artistic proofs of a powerful speech. He said that any speech, if you want it to be really remembered, it must have three elements. In Greek, they are called ethos. Pathos. Have you heard about this? Yeah. So, if your speech has to be really powerful, you must include all three elements. What does ethos mean? Ethos is the character of the person speaking. Like today I'm talking about organizing a speech. Do I have the qualifications to do that? Okay. So if I want to talk about something, I should select a subject that I'm comfortable with. People will believe me. So that's the ethos, the character of the person who is delivering the speech. If I was to ask you to deliver a speech, what, what would be your ethos? What are you good at? Entertainment. 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 You're good at entertainment? You like to make people laugh? So when you are talking and making people laugh, they will believe you because that's your nature. What about you? You, you wanted to raise your hand? Comedy. Comedy. So everyone is a comedian here. That's great. <laughs> you talk about something that you are good at. That's the ethos. Logos is the logic, the facts. So when I'm talking about plastic, for example, I must include facts. How much plastic? Do the research. Why is it bad? Do the research. What kind of diseases does it cause? Do the research and show the research, the facts. And finally, pathos is the emotion. Everybody loves emotion, right? That's why we love watching Netflix. Who loves? Somebody said they, yeah. Because it, you have that emotion from the actors and actresses. You must have emotion because people believe when there is emotion. If I come and say today, I'm going to tell you why plastic is bad. Plastic is bad because it causes this, this. There's no emotion. You must feel it, that it is really important to you to do this thing. Then people will believe you. So combine these three elements. When you come on the stage, think of a subject that you're good at, bring some information about it so people will believe you, and speak about it passionately, with passion. That's the path. Let's construct using this elements of a conclusion, opening, body, a title, and this elements. Let's choose. It's very easy to create a speech which is more about persuasion. So let's select persuasion as a topic. And what kind of topic can we create? Give me some suggestions. Uh, to eat healthy. To eat healthy. OK, eat healthy. That's our uh, main subject, uh, which we are choosing. Anything else? Live happy, don't be sad. Live happy, don't be sad. That's a very broad topic. <laughs> I don't know if I can bring enough uh, facts. But anyway. Live happy. Live happy. OK, don't be sad. OK, any other subject? Save the earth. Oh, save the earth from pollution. OK. 
Anything else we can think of? Like Oreos with water are the worst type of food. Okay. Uh, okay. Persuasion. We are talking about persuading somebody, right? Extra uh, aliens exist. Or okay, fine. Aliens exist. You can pick up topics like this, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'll choose something which is easy for us to build. Let's choose eat healthy. Okay. We are going to create a speech where we will persuade people to eat healthy. Let's think of a conclusion. How would you conclude a speech like this? If you want to be healthy, eat healthy. That's your this thing. Okay. Will you be healthy afterwards? Amazing. So we'll end with a question so everyone is forced to say yes, right? <laughs> so our conclusion will be, will you eat healthy? I mean, you can eat junk, but limited. OK, but <laughs> we, limited. we want to really persuade you, so no junk. <laughs> For this example, will you eat healthy? You know, and ask people to raise their hand or something. That's the ending. So you are forced to say yes. Great okay. job. Now, how would you start a speech like this? Who only eats healthy? Okay, amazing. <laughs> Who here eats healthy always? Healthy <laughs> always. So I could ask a question like this. Who here eats healthy food? This speech is not for you and not for you. This is for the rest. So you see how I started the, uh, this thing? So you ask the question and then engage them and make it funny. So that's what I said you all the time. Yeah, so you got the ideas now, right? So for us, we have already started uh, this thing. Uh, we have an opening, we have a closing. Now, let's give a title to this speech. Funny title or nice title or powerful title. Just short title, very short. What did you eat today? Good. Anything else? You have something Why better? Junk? Why junk? Why healthy? Junk is sir, 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 read this book sir. and you will get to know. Why healthy but not junk? Why healthy but not junk? Okay, let's go with that. Now, what would you write in the speech to convince people to eat healthy? All the side effects. Everything that happens. Junk food. Uh, there's all the side effects for healthy, you know. Okay. <laughs> What else? Yes, yes, yes. All the scary things that happen if you do not eat and what happens. Give me one example of scary thing that happens. Cholesterol, <laughs> hundred of things we can list, but we should choose two or three the best ones. Let's say these are the best ones. Now, can you come and deliver this speech in 30 seconds? 30 seconds. What's your name? OK, Rohma, why healthy but not junk? Look this way. Who in the world here eats healthy? I guess you all are lying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm sure my body is not fat. <laughs> no, everyone you here is lying. You just and I can tell that. The drink that you drank, the thing that you had before coming here, must be all having some or the other junk. I said some yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like eat but why eat healthy when there's so many junk foods deliciously down the tray right in front of you? Well, to tell, because they are bad. If you eat healthy, you can live longer. Thank you. End the, end the speech. <laughs> Who will eat healthy after this? And I bet every one of you has to eat healthy after this. <laughs> so you see now what we have done. We, in the 30 minutes, we have understood that we should start with a conclusion Think of a good opening, give a nice title, build your body, and you have a great speech.